This is Kate Beckinsale. You're listening to Bacon Sale. I hear the Batmobile coming, it's rolling around the bend, and I ain't seen the Batman since, I don't know when I'm stuck at Arkham Asylum, (laughs) and he keeps bringing more, but Batman keeps dropping prisoners. Through our revolving door. <laughs> That's it. Yay! <laughs> Two takes. No big deal. It's fine. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> you know, Blackgate Prison would have worked way better for this. Oh, it totally would have. Uh, I swear you've done Ring of Fire. That wasn't. That was uh, Folsom, Folsom Prison. Prison. I don't know what I mean. So I'm trying to remember. You didn't know Johnny Cash. Oh song. yeah. I love oh Johnny yeah. Cash. yeah. And it burned, burned, burned. It was the pizza. Yeah. It was. I sing, I sing right. that all the time to this day. You do. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I'm Welcome to Bacon Cell. I'm Joel. I'm Kent. And I'm Zach. I'd like to thank you for listening to our last show. Our sports awesome, we're cool show. We are so cool. We're so sports. sports. <laughs> um, Team JK. <laughs> on Instagram, Mandy Sue Sparkle said, most sporty sporters play the sport, propel the ball at the thing, punch the other team in the face. And that's the energy that show has. Yes, we did yes. all those things. Wait, that seemed really supportive because it doesn't seem like anyone else wanted to cheer us on. No, well, well all rooting for our demise. They all want to see our cheerleader cheer, which we don't have to do. Too bad. Yeah, I got a little bit of a hard time that I should have gone harder on you guys. And I wanted you to have some semblance of success. Yeah, but we, you did I, better than I thought you would. Yeah, you thank really you, did. Thank you. I dumbed it down, and you surprised me. <laughs> well, the thing sale. is, I still think it's basic stuff. There's still basic stuff out there. I think we would get completely wrong. You just asked the right basic stuff. Oh, I happened to. Yes. Well, Drew Kimball says me listening to this episode. I need to learn to be as confident as Kent in giving answers <laughs> and comments, regardless <laughs> if it is correct or not, because everyone will think it is. That's a life lesson right there. Volleyball. I questioned myself because of he, he called me stupid. I did not call you stupid. You're like, that is the worst answer ever, Joel. <laughs> it's what? obviously back wanderer. Yeah. The back wanderer. Wow. <laughs> and now I will say there has to be a formal correction made. Called out by who else but Nicole D. Hale, a.k.a. the only person who actually watches hockey. (laughs) (laughs) Big mistake, boys. The Canadians, better known as the Habs. Uh, Is it Hobbs and Shaw? You're asking the wrong people. Uh, Did not win the Stanley Cup last year. That was a mistake on my part. Uh, They were in the finals with the Tampa Bay Lightning and the Lightning won. Uh, the but we would have got it wrong before. anyway. Yeah, absolutely. You and I knew that. And I think I was trying to block out the fact that another Tampa Bay team won the championship mm-hmm. that year. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember watching the finals and hoping the Canadians won because uh, they had better colors. So that's, that's, that's how, how I, I rolled in your my bias. So sorry, I got it wrong. That's why I root for the Seahawks. Better colors. <laughs> sure. And then also Christy Western, whoever that is. I laughed way too hard during this episode. Great stuff. Gold star. Gold Yay. stars? We have gold stars now? That's the best kind Those of star. the best kind of stars. Thank you for listening. Thank you for playing, gentlemen. That was fun. Yeah. Yes, it was. We appreciate your feedback. And also, speaking of feedback. Yes. Today, the, the airing of this episode... February 28th, 2022, is the last day to submit your submission for The Song of Songs. Both of them put their hand up in the air, and Joel did the Italian fingers thing. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Uh, no, but we are creating a bracket based on your songs, meaning you submit a song that you think could win as the greatest song. Like your favorite popular song. Or th- what you consider to be the best song of all yeah. time. This is the ultimate song. Don't be playing these guys that you think you're going to get it. Yeah, because what? a song did well in a bracket previously. No, but yeah. forward the Do song that show. you think is like the champion song. Yes. You, like this is the, the song I would put on the highest peak of the mountain. We have, That's the song. We have put that, links you on put songs on mountains. I do. We have put links in our bio on Instagram, on Facebook, and on Twitter, Google Form. You go enter there. You can see what other people have done as well. Make sure to see what other people have done because people have been submitting things that have already been submitted, and we only take the first one. So go there, submit them today because we are closing the form tonight. And I will say, just because you submit one doesn't mean it will guarantee to be on the show. No. But we, of course, want as much feedback as we can get. Absolutely. Exactly. But that's not what we're talking about today. What are we talking about today, Zach? We're talking Batman. Batman. Yeah. It's Batman week. Now, because it's, we wanted to talk Batman, there's so many different things we could do. We decided, let's start with the villains. Because that's, that's it really... It seems so wrong. So because good. we often criticize Batman movies for being only about the villains. Because what about Batman? He, but that's what we're doing today. Batman. He doesn't need you. He's got so many good villains, though. He so does, many he good does have so, so many good villains. And... Uh, well, here's the scenario. <laughs> oh, no. 
We're just going to tear it. We get like scenarios. Normal. We're just going to no, tear The it. scenario is that Kent, Zach, and I are security guards at Arkham Asylum. Sure we are. Do we have a uniform? Yes, oh, we yeah. do. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Night sticks and hats. <gasps> and, yeah. Get the stick. Uh, maybe some tasers, too, just for fun. Shut up. I feel like the, the tasers, tasers are going to be used on us. Probably. They'll okay. Be used against mm-hmm. us. But we are security guards working here at Arkham Asylum. And uh, <laughs> Why did we sign up for this job? Because we like Batman. <laughs> the economy in Gotham's not great. <laughs> but uh, all the rogues, Batman's, uh, the, they call them the rogues. The, yeah, rogue the rogues gallery. gallery. That's sure. what they call them. Yeah. But all the, all the villains from Batman have escaped. And Batman's going to bring in 24 of them back to us. Specifically. And it, it, that is like, you know, kind of the classic lineup of rogues. We're picking yeah. the big ones here. We're not going to be talking about like Egghead. Yeah, false face. Also, yeah. we don't have enough cells for the Court of Owls. No, we have no. eight <laughs> maximum security cells. Eight <laughs> medium security cells and eight minimum security cells. I like how Arkham has minimum security cells. I mean, everyone escapes anyways, so they well, all seem kind of minimum, but this, still. This is a triage but we're type in situation. Charge. How could they escape? <laughs> but here's the thing it's a triage type situation, all hands on deck, red alert. So we are just throwing people in these holding cells with all their weapons and their uniforms and their costumes. And so everything you're saying they have Batman's going to swing around, throw someone out of his trunk. Yes. And we have to put where they go. We have to decide which level of security we're putting these villains in. Mm-hmm. For now, kind of a holding situation until we can, you know, process them and take away their weapons. But a lot, of, yeah, a lot of them have weapons. Like then, we just got to throw them in real quick because <laughs> Batman's gonna be cranking it's them through. So smart to throw someone in a cell with a gun. <laughs> it's great. Hey. We're Arkham, we're Arkham so, security guards. Joel, Why do you think people always escape from Arkham Asylum? Joel, you were talking about this before. Think of it like as in there's bars. Yes, bars for like min- minimum. minimum. Or just like a, a door that you could open and no, shut. Like it's, it's no bars. big deal. It's bars. Uh, plexiglass for medium. Yes. And then like a steel door. Steel door for the maximum. Just solid. Okay. Uh, they have nicknames. Don't you know? They Go call on. the maximum security tier one. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying when we accidentally say when tier two, accidentally say yeah. tier yeah. one, tier here, here two, and Arkham, tier three. That's how we do it. Well, because they're on literal levels. The maximum security is on the the, the first tier. Of and the, so we're not. I don't know. We're not ranking how cool these villains are, sure. or how you know fun they are, or how you know how classic. Iconic, yes, a classic. We're it's the level of danger we're going for here. We're like, hey, we we got to make sure this person's taken care of because they could break out and kill a lot more. Do you feel like everyone above us has been killed? That's why we have this job now. This is my first night on the job. You gotta see- <laughs> oh, welcome. Yeah, I've been here for two weeks. So nice. let me show you the ropes, guys. You got to say unalived. Here's an orange dot. Thank you. It's, it's unalived. Oh, According uh, to the new rules. Oh, uh, we don't follow Twitter rules. <laughs> TikTok. <laughs> Stop it. We're going to put you in a cell. Okay. <laughs> no, no, you don't want to be in a cell. But uh, let's jump into it, shall yeah. we? So, uh, and by the way, we're not going by ourselves and just saying, hey, I think that's a tier two. We have to agree because like, we have this shared amount of cells. Yes. Where we, they we all go. work we have here. 24 cells for these 24 villains. You know, I fell on hard times here in Gotham City. But we are a that's democracy. We have to, to sound like We're a democracy well. here <laughs> at Arkham. You know, Batman's going to gonna bring us some villains. We, got, we can't run out of cells, though. We can't put them all in tier one. Nope. Not enough room. <laughs> hey, you guys hear that? It's, it's Batman. It's Batman. Why do I sound like a villain? <laughs> what is it, Jeff? Why do I sound like, like a rat? A, a, a New Goose. Jersey rat. <laughs> If you've seen the animated series, you know. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. All right. Batman swings by in his super cool car thing. What's that called? Batman Bat- 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 He swings in and he's like, hey, I got this for you. It's the Riddler. Is that his voice? No. <laughs> so it's just like, oh, look, Riddler's on our Oh, well, hey. Hi, Riddler. So the Riddler first appeared in Detective Comics 140, which came out in October 1948. Batman, by the way, came out in 1939. So mm-hmm. this is a little bit down the road. Uh, the character commonly wears a domino mask and either a green unitard decorated with question mark prints or a green suit with and a bowler hat. The green, purple, those are kind of his colors. Uh, question marks, that's his motif. So I'm looking at his rap sheet right now, and there's actually a little bit of profile information about how he got started. Wow, we're really diving into this yeah, some, uh, scenario. Yeah, some origin if you want. Yeah, go for the So origin. he was actually a product of a broken home. So, I mean, has some sympathy, really. Uh, his mother didn't support him, and his father was abusive. He won a riddle contest at school and got a riddle book as a prize. And his father accused him of cheating, and, well, things didn't go well. And so he uh, decided to uh, pursue a life of crime. Did you say he? His, he, the Riddler, not his father. No, no. Edward Nigma. Edward Nigma. He didn't become yes. the Riddler until later. Yes, that's true. So E Nigma. Mm-hmm. What? Uh, Mr. E. E. Mr. E. Yeah, Nygma. Edward Nigma. Yeah, there you go. That, but the animated series taught you that, right? <laughs> yeah, we all felt so Batman smart. Forever. I'm pretty Batman, sure Batman, Batman, Batman Forever. Okay, okay. But. So uh, the Riddler has a genius level intellect, guys. He's a criminal mastermind. He's a skilled inventor, engineer, and escape artist. Yeah. 
He uses complex riddles, puzzles, and lethal contraptions. He's basically Jigsaw from the Saw movies. Well, if we're talking like the Arkham games, I think he's the worst of the lot. Because, because of all the side missions? Yeah, because you hate him so much. You're like, why are you here? He's a cool character, but all those side missions that He's are so unbeatable, arrogant. I think he is a danger to society. He's not as malicious to regular people. And that's kind of no. how I'm considering this, right? Are these villains obsessed with Batman? Do they want him to suffer? Or are they just willing to kill whoever? Right. Or are they going to kill us if right. they get out? And so I think he's kind of right in the middle. He has been known to torture and kill people who fail his riddles Mm -hmm. could be one of us i don't know no but here's what i'm going to disagree with you yeah because that's when he has time to plan and time to set up stuff well that's what he does though but he doesn't have that in the inner cells well he's going to be in a cell for a while and i mean he does have genius level intellect he's going to be in a cell what's he going to do he has all of his stuff he has stuff in his jacket he doesn't have stuff in his jacket i think on his own he's kind of a punk no, here's the thing. It says he needs the prep. in Wikipedia. It's just one mm-hmm. of the truth. It says he is not especially talented in fisticuffs. Hey. So he's not a good fighter. But he's a strategist. He and has no superpowers. And he's manipulative. And remember, there are people. We have staff here at Arkham. That we can, do? That, <laughs> Why are we at the front then? <laughs> because everyone else above us died. But people can be manipulated. And I think he is the guy to do it. Also, he's done this with villains who are even smarter than him several times in the past. So I think because he's good at manipulation... Like, I'm not personally afraid of him because I don't think he's a danger to everyone, but I would say it's a medium. See, and I say I say minimum security. He's a, he's a normal mortal. He didn't have time to set up anything in his cell. We're putting him in, the, in there, and he's not going to be able to do anything But while you don't in think there. he planned to get captured, for example, because this is the Riddler. Nah, he, he thinks he's too good to be captured. What I if think I, surprised every time. What if I told you that in the Arkhamverse, the guy's name was Edward Nashton? Nashton, yes. What? You scared, you scared <laughs> of that guy? Yes, I still am. Yes. You scared, especially, of, you scared of Jim Carrey's especially pajamas? The, the, well, Paul Dano's Riddler. I definitely okay. haven't seen that yet. Yeah, but let's be honest. It looks really he scary. always has a plan. But he's not going to have also, a plan. Also, I think he's super smart. I mean, I'm, I'll make a case for him. He's one of the few villains who actually knows who... Well, guys, I don't know if you know this. There's a word on the street. Bruce Wayne. Batman. That's ridiculous. I know. But the Riddler actually knows. Well, Bruce Wayne is a millionaire playboy. <laughs> a why? He doesn't care. A why is Bruce Wayne dressed up like Batman? <laughs> so the Riddler knows this and kind of plays this game with Batman and uh, doesn't want to tell anyone else. And so I think he is very deceptive. I think there are more dangerous people out there that I think we need to put far in tier weaker. two. I think there's far weaker people. I think we need to drop him down to minimum security. He's just a human in a green, in a, in a green unit. I totally disagree. Can you step back into reality for a minute? Oh, there goes gravity. What's the best version of this character? The Riddler. In in media. There's so many different types of him. Yeah. I mean, I would say animated series up until the new one, which I think has potential. Uh, it certainly could, yeah. could be the I actually one. didn't mind Jim Carrey's version of it. Oh. He's much better than Tommy Lee Jones' Two-Face. Oh. <laughs> Have you a... ever seen the show Gotham? Shut up. <laughs> Your face. He's we not the worst in Gotham. Vowed. <laughs> He's actually... We vowed we would not talk about He's Gotham. A, he is a straight-up murderer in Gotham. Yeah. And nuts. Yeah, but like the first episode, he comes up like as a character. He's like, hi, I like riddles. And I'm oh. like, oh, who are you going to be? Yeah, I know. Okay, back to it. I'm going to agree with Joel. Yes. I think that we've made a bigger, mistake. I think we we're going to get trapped. We got bigger fish to fry. All right. At prison door closing sound effect here, Kent. <laughs> Kent. <laughs> Don't say my name. I'm a guard. All right. Batman's pulling back up here, and he's dropping off Mr. Black Mask. Black Mask. A.K.A. Roman Sionis. You can say it like that, sure. Yeah. He originally appeared in, in 1985 in Batman 386. He is commonly depicted as a brutal and ruthless crime lord in Gotham who has a fixation with masks and and derives sadistic pleasure from the act of torture. Yeah. He's not I, a nice guy. I wasn't laughing at that. <laughs> oh, you weren't laughing at I, torture. No. I, we do work at Arkham. I was laughing at his origin story. Yeah. Let me know if you have the same one. Mm. Mine's not as funny. Maybe you have a different one. Well, just it's it's very it's a lot of bad luck for one person. Yeah, it really is. He came from a lot of money, similar to Bruce Wayne, mm-hmm. but he hated his parents. And so he wanted all the money. So after high school, he started a fire that killed his parents. Not killed a, his dad. Not his mom. No, oh, he killed her later. Oh, great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Here you go. And then he actually carved his mask, his black mask, from his dad's black coffin. Well, a little morbid. Yes, but and then I also so this is the brief origin story I have here. Uh, dropped on his head when he was being born, mm-hmm. bit by a rabid raccoon. Oh yes, that too. And then struck by lightning while visiting his parents' crypt. And then the, when the coffin came apart, he mm-hmm. made a mask out of it. So yeah, not a lot luck. of good luck. Here. And the mask actually got burned to his face in one of the uh, comic stories as well. Mm-hmm. And so the mask is permanent as well. Yeah. And I looked at like how dangerous is this guy because he kind of is just kind of a 
He feels like a low-level mobster that just is full of rage to me. I explained it to my son as he's the dark version of Bruce Wayne. Came mm. from an affluent family. Yeah. Parents are dead. Well, there are a few of those, by the way, in this. Yeah. But yes. yes. Uh, and then he became kind of the, the crime lord, like yeah. the crime Batman with a mask and everything. I think he wants power more than he wants to murder, but he has had a lot of history with murder as well. He's, For example, like he's had a couple run-ins with Catwoman. He actually killed Catwoman's brother-in-law. And then he, no, not her brother-in-law. Yeah, right? Oh no! Oh, not, what an origin story! Not George. But, but then he forced Catwoman's sister to eat the brother-in-law. Okay, family friendly. <laughs> I mean, I Kids mean, are I'm going to listen dark. to this show. Uh, uh, have him over for dinner. Thank you. And alive. Uh, he's also a criminal mastermind, an expert yes. in hand-to-hand combat. He's an expert marksman as well. He has double guns, but uh, that he usually uses. But he also can fight with swords. Uh, He's an accomplished businessman, impersonator, actor, and escape artist. Yeah. I like how any sort of ability, if if they want to, like, make it sound cool, they say enhanced. Yes. Or superhuman, above average. And it's like, "Eh, this guy is kind of irrational. It feels like everyone's like that. So I feel bad when some comments are, like, basic hand-to-hand combat. And I'm like, oh, dude, you're screwed. Yeah. Like the Riddler, for example. Basic. Yeah. He's bad at fisticuffs. Black Mask can fight. I don't know if you saw Birds of Prey. I almost watched that today. Yeah. He's kind of a punk, uh, played by Ewan McGregor. Ewan McGregor? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's he's angry all the time, but he's kind of a punk, and he kind of goes out like a punk. Is Black- it a good portrayal of him? You think it's the only portrayal we really have? Yeah, well, of Black, Black Mask, Mask gets no, he's a, in the animated gets, series. Yeah, I mean, a little bit. He was and in he, Arkham uh, well, City. Well, he was uh, in Origins. It was it, yeah? He's supposed to be in Arkham Origins, but Oops. it's a twist. Mm, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I, th- that's the thing. I I don't know that this character is really well known. You know, I, yeah. people just don't really. See well, this we're, guy. we're not we're not ranking on knownness here. We're ranking on. Dangerous. Dangerousness. Yeah. I think he is dangerous when he's out and about, and he will have his guns while in the cell, but I'm still putting him in a tier three. I'm um, also minimum putting security. him in tier three. Yeah. Because he doesn't have any, like, and that's why I think the Riddler deserves, well, a second chance. He's getting out anyways. All of these people are getting out of our I feel, because I don't want to get letters. The Riddler's a tier one villain. Yes. <laughs> but, but you know. Danger get, level. So danger. we're not ranking on the, on the villain in their history. So we agree that he gets minimum security. Minimum security. He's behind bars. Oh, no. Are we getting rid of our minimum security too fast? We've only got two. Two. We're fine. we got Still, six left. It's been like an hour into the show. We're only at two. <laughs> it's almost my lunch break. <laughs> yeah. Next up is... What, what you got, Batman? That's uh, Man Bat. <laughs> Which I love the fact that uh, this he came out in June 1970 is when Man Bat first appeared in Detective Comics number 400. But they were like, hey... Who what? should we have fight Batman? What, if, what about Man Bat? <laughs> he's but he's like a bat, but like a man, but not Batman. It's like the other way around. Flip it. it sounds cool. Flip it and reverse it. So his name is Kirk Langstrom. Mm-hmm. Uh, he is a gifted zoologist and scientist. He was actually trying to find a cure for deafness, and so he used uh, he extracted bat DNA and he used it on himself, and it worked. He gets sonar powers. Yes, but then he became this hybrid. And he's kind of like a werewolf in yes. that sense, where he's he's human, mm-hmm. but occasionally, uh, in times of stress or when he takes a drug, depending on which version you're going with, he turns into this feral bat-like creature yeah. that will scare the pants off you as you're playing a <laughs> video game and scar you for life. I think that's the moment we've talked about more in this show about video games than in any other moment. Probably so. We were talking about that in our, our horror video game. so terrifying. Uh, his abilities, when he's transformed, he has superhuman strength, he has flight, sharp claws, echolocation, sound manipulation... So he's got he had, he had his own uh, comic series. Yeah, lasted two issues. Yeah, of course he did turn his wife into she bat. Yeah, that's pretty mean, right? Yeah, he convinced her to take the drug too. I would actually be terrified. I, I don't know if we're getting Kirk or if we're getting Man Bat in. I think we're getting Man Bat in because that's a monster. I don't think he'd bring Kirk back. Kirk yeah, bat. yeah, he wouldn't bring Kirk in. He's bringing Man Bat okay, in because I'm actually kind of afraid to have a monster and have to put it in a cell. A giant bat. I'm going to need to change my uniform. I'm so scared of this guy. <laughs> of Manbat? Yeah. I'm terrified. Yeah, and he'll mess with your hair, and you love your hair. I do. Bats love hair. <laughs> <laughs> Why did he mess with my hair? He just kind of tossed it a little bit. <laughs> What's, going on? What's going on over this here? This is what but, I do. But, 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 when the formula wears off. When <laughs> yes, the, he's a super villain. <laughs> when the formula wears off, he's a normal good guy. But so I'm so putting him in we, tier two because I'm like, look, let's put him behind glass, let him calm oh, down, yeah. and then we he'll need be a fine. solid holding tank, and then he'll chill out. Medium Plexiglass security because I want to stare and be afraid a little bit, and then throw but Zach like, in there to tussle his hair. <laughs> <laughs> Why is he tossing my hair? Your hair is beautiful, and so I feel like that's the real act of crime. That uh, I'm offended. Yeah, I'm offended. That's but, a misdemeanor in Gotham. <laughs> but messing I, with Zach's hair. <laughs> like if he got out, which he will, I'm, I'm afraid of like his claws. Yeah, he, yeah, you don't want to put him behind bars, but. 
I don't think is one of the most intimidating villains that Batman has. He's not a real killer. I, in fact, he's there by accident. He's a feral animal yes. when he's when he's the bat. Right. So yeah, tier. Are we going with mid, mid, yeah. medium? Medium. Medium security. Medium security. Right in the middle there. All right. Next up is oh, Mister. Uh, sorry, Doctor. Doctor is it? Doctor Hugo Strange. Hugo Strange first appeared in 1940, so very soon after Batman began. Mm -hmm. He's an evil psychologist and a chemical genius. He's a bald dude with glasses. Usually yeah, with a, a little look on his face. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's the, uh, well, the overarching villain. Maybe not the main villain, but the overarching villain in Arkham City, if you've played that game. He's a presence there. Yes. Yeah, but he's not like there, there. He's a weird character because he studies. Yeah, obviously, as a psychologist, he studies people. And uh, he studied Bruce Wayne and learned that he was Batman and yeah. became obsessed. Apparently, uh, Bruce Wayne checked into the hospital to recover from radiation burns from Dr. Phosphorus. <laughs> And Hugo Strange real kind of put two and two together that, oh, Batman was fighting him. Now yeah. Bruce Wayne has these burns. He's Batman! Right. So he's a smart so guy. So I've heard yeah, yeah. as the guard here That's in Arkham. That's the rumor <laughs> word on the street. I don't believe but, it. But he wants the identity of Batman for himself mm -hmm. uh, to the point where he's impersonated the character quite a few times. He's also escaped Arkham several times with other inmates. And then he's gone on to test on them. So I think his killer instinct is more like focused on Batman himself, but he is willing to cause a lot of... A harm to others. And he's very, very smart. Yes. He does know hand-to-hand -hand combat, and he's a skilled acrobat and gymnast. Gymnast? That's what it says. I don't think so. Just because so. he's a doctor, he can't work out? Come on. Have you seen him? He has been known to create, like, hulking beasts, like, to go up against Batman. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's going to do that in Arkham, but I think he's a danger to others. Yeah. But I still think he's kind of a wormy psychologist. <laughs> like those, I, Those are the worst kind of psychologists. <laughs> I do want to keep him in minimum. But like, is I mean, he may study us and he may manipulate. us. I was gonna us. say he's gonna manipulate us through the bars. Yeah, but I think there's several. Not, not us. Come on. I think us being prepared with that, like that's a risk, right? And I mean, it will probably work because I, I mean, we're bumbling Arkham security guards. I, I agree. He's a minimum security prisoner. This is a tier three. Where yeah, he's he's, he's not, not an immediate cause a threat. threat. No, he's not gonna like hurt us in any regard yeah. in that and way. he doesn't want to destroy Gotham City he just wants Batman although fun fact in December of 1940 Dr. Hugo Strange spread a fear inducing powder around the city until a punch from Batman again sends him falling to his apparent death mm -hmm. but does that sound familiar fear inducing powder around the city yeah a little bit because apparently he had an apprentice we'll get to that later Ooh. Oh. but That's not right. not just yet Mr. Mr. Batman over here just dropped off Mr. Freeze. Do we ever get a break? Thanks, Batman. No, oh, it's a busy night for Batman. <laughs> yeah. Deal with it. Busy night for us. Him up quick. I, guys, I haven't even had lunch. Oh, shoot. What what was your lunch tonight? schedule? I'm yeah, in 15 right minutes. Uh, so Mr. Freeze was actually Mr. Zero in his first appearance in February of 1959. He didn't become Mr. Freeze until the Batman TV series in 1966. Yeah. That's a when he came to freeze. AKA Victor Freeze, but it's not spelled Freeze, it's F R I E. Fries. Victor Fries. Why couldn't they just spell yeah. it Freeze? Oh, so yeah. the, the story of Mr. Freeze is truly the tragedy. It is. His wife, Nora, was diagnosed with a terminal illness, and this is before he was a villain. So he put her into cryostasis until a cure was found. Cryostasis meaning he, fr he yes. froze her. And so the boss is like, hey, what are you doing? This is taking up way too much money. I'm shutting the project down. He kicked Victor into a table of unstable coolant chemicals, turning him Done. into this immortal being, well, essentially. It altered his body chemistry so that he has to keep his body temperature at zero. Yes. Right. So he wears a special cryogenic suit, which gives him also kind of super strength, mm -hmm. but he needs that cold in order to survive. Also, he has this freeze gun, which can freeze people, freeze walls, freeze bars... I'm a little worried about Mr. Freeze. Offers him a lot of opportunity for puns involving cold things. Yes. Chill. It's great. <sighs> I used to see you. No. We're not, we're not talking about Batman and Robin. One killed the dinosaurs. The, the Ice, Ice Age. Age. No, please stop. Which, that doesn't even so, make sense. I don't feel like he's actually villainous for villainous sake. Like, he does run across Batman's path a lot. His main goal is to find a cure for his wife's illness, and he will destroy anyone who gets in his at way. At any yes. cost. Yeah. yeah. So he doesn't have rules or morals <laughs> other than try to save Nora. Yeah. But what he can do is extremely dangerous. Like, I hate how in things, if, if someone gets unfrozen, they're kind of like, oh, let me get a towel I, and thaw off a little bit. Like, you're dead if you get frozen by the no. freeze, right? Yeah, you're dead. No, you're frozen, and but your eyeballs can still move, and you're like, let me out no, of no, here. No, you're, you're dead, Joel. <laughs> well, and I'm also worried a little bit about escaping because 
You put him in a cell with bars, Mm -hmm. he freezes the bars, breaks through, he's out. Well, steel door as well. I mean, everyone's getting out, right? Eventually. But we're just trying to delay the inevitable. Yeah. Um, Fun fact, by the mm -hmm. way, his sub-zero physiology makes it so that viruses and bacteria and toxins don't work on him because they can't survive in his body. And bullets bounce off of his suit, so we don't stand a chance. I think he is maximum security. See, and I put him in medium only because... Only because I don't see him as an angry threat, but he can break out Look, of a minimum pretty easy. While he's in there, he can't work on a cure for Nora. That's what I was going to say. Is he's, he's now like, let's so say. So what we do is we tell him, hey, we'll work on the cure. Uh, no. He's going to believe us. You he's just chill for you've a little got, bit. You've got bologna and mustard no, on your let's cheek say right he's now. In the, if he's in the <laughs> middle he's lunch. of some, you know, some process with his wife, like I yeah. need to do this thing now, again, he will well, stop at And nothing. that's why Batman caught him. He was probably robbing a bank to get money. For this process, but if he were to break out, it would be like out the back wall or something. He wouldn't come at us and hurt us. Uh, we'd be right behind the door trying to stop him because we are security. Guards. I don't get paid that much. <laughs> we're we're going to die in any case. I think he's straight up one of the most dangerous, even though he's not as malicious as the others. But what he can do is horrible. I don't think he's a tier one villain, but I think well, he should be in maximum security. I think he's a tier one villain as well. I think he's he like has high, been represented he's well enough. High tier two. Horrifying in City. Yeah. yeah Arkham, Arkham City, I yes. should clarify. That, the video that's game. true. That is that, true. That, that level every time just gives panic inducing. I am is very he, concerned. If he's got all his gear, yeah. I'm worried about him. Is, yeah. he, is he our first tier one? This is our first tier maximum one. Security. Maximum security. Okay. I wouldn't put him there. I've got other people. Uh, just, other people are going to hurt us. He's not going to hurt us. They're all going to hurt us. Well, these guys aren't going to break out. It hasn't happened that many times. Joel, I feel like you're just going to unlock the door for some of these people. Hey. Hey, don't hurt me. <laughs> <laughs> these other guys are jerks. <laughs> hey, hey, Miss, Mr. Freeze. I got. I need a, uh, another guy for the bowling league. You want to go? <laughs> okay. Um, next up, we have uh, Deadshot was just dropped off. Deadshot. Is that the one played by Ryan Reynolds? Let's stop that right now. Uh, what are we? Some kind of Deadshot? Uh, Deadshot first appeared in uh, June 1950 in Batman Comics. He is an excellent sniper who regularly boasts of never missing a shot. Woo! A.K.A. Floyd Lawton. So his bio, his brother... So when he was a kid, uh, he and his brother really got along. Their parents were not super great. Once again, there's real parenting issues we need to talk about. But that usually happens later. Like in the 70s and 80s, I feel they went, let's make these characters dark. Yeah, that, that's true. So he and his brother really hated their dad. Apparently, he's very abusive. So his brother was going to shoot their dad. And he stole the gun from his brother. And he climbed a tree to, uh, to hide the gun. The tree branch broke. And the gun shot his brother. Oh, no. And so that turned him into, well, a life of crime and obviously killed we his dad. We should clarify. When we're talking yes. origin stories, there are many origin stories for each one of these right. villains. Mm-hmm. So we're doing the ones that are most prominent in our mind. Yes. And there could be animated series, it could be comics canon, it could be new movie canon. Mm-hmm. And obviously we talked a lot about the game. Yes. The Arkham yeah. Arkham video games. Well, his original outfit, by the way, was a tux and tails yeah. and a top hat and a little that. mask. It's pretty cool. Yeah. And then he, now he wears a red jumpsuit and a metal faceplate with a Do you a feel like device. he's less intimidating because of the uh, Will Smith Suicide Squad performance? <sighs> because he became an anti-hero. Yeah. He wasn't a villain anymore. Yeah. No, he's a straight up villain and he's... I mean, it's really cool. Like, he doesn't miss a shot. He's the world's greatest he can He can do ricochets where he'll kill multiple targets at the same time. He can shoot around corners. Mm-hmm. Uh, he can he, withstand explosions. Yeah. He, he usually has a sniper rifle and then twin machine guns on each arm. Yeah. Uh, and he, his helmet has, like, night vision, thermal. He's also adept in karate, jiu-jitsu, judo, boxing, krav maga, and muay, muay thai. Is I have, that right? I have never muay understood thai. the arm machine gun thing. Where's the ammunition? In the back. Armpit. Mm, no, armpit, like armpit. Armpit ammo. So can we, can we clarify, is the medium security plexiglass bulletproof? Yes. Then that's where you should go. I agree. I agree. Okay, he's going to medium security. Well, that was he, easy. He well, doesn't deserve anything higher, let's be honest. Well, he's also he's, he's a, a, a bounty hunter. If the pay is in, like apparently Batman wasn't going to be able to stop him. And so then he froze the account of what he's getting paid for. And Deadshot was like, okay, I'm not doing this job anymore. I'm not getting paid. Yeah, and that's just it. He's not particularly malicious against the common people. No. Like, he, if he has he's not being to paid do, to kill us, he'll do it. A random villain once said, if you're good at something, never do it for free. So. There you go. Why? Hmm. Random villain. <laughs> Next up, uh, Deadshot's buddy just got dropped off. It's uh, Miss Harley Quinn. Harleen Francis Quinzel. Hey, we know her, right? Didn't yeah. she work here at Arkham? 
How hot. Dr. Oh, Quinzel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dr. Quinzel. really pretty. Whoa. Remember I had a crush I'm on her? New, so I'm just assuming. Oh, she was, oh. She was very There pretty. was a whole thing where she fell in the vat of goo. Yeah. She, yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, I don't, uh, really, I don't really buy into that origin. We so had to fun, change. We had to change the accident, you know, timer. Fun fact mm-hmm. about Harley Quinn: her first <laughs> appearance was in the animated series mm-hmm. yeah. in 1992. She was not in the comics at all, and she was created primarily as kind of this. Joker was kind of a scary character. She was going to be the comedic foil to Joker. Yes, and then she was only supposed to be in one episode, and that was it. But people liked her so much that she became well cosplay for decades. Yeah. Everyone dresses her now. Well, and to the point now where she is one of the mainstays of the DC universe in the movies. And not really deserved, but still there. Uh, she, in the first appearance at least, she wore a jester-like costume. She has a high voice and carries an oversized mallet. Mm-hmm. She says pudding. She has immunity to most toxins. She's a proficient gymnast. Uh, exceptional agility and strength. Uh, she also has a pair of hyenas, Bud and Lou, who sometimes serve as her attack dogs. And she's adept at deception and psychological manipulation because she's a trained psychiatrist. Right. So is she a straight-up killer? She, I mean, obviously working with Joker, you have to be, right? To right. be part of those plans. She has given exploding video games to kids. What? Yeah, and not good. And then she also, anytime her put-in has uh, needed to break out of uh, Arkham. Mr. J. Yeah, Mr. J. She helped him break out. Fun fact, by the way, in her history, so Arlene Sorkin, uh, the voice of Harley Quinn, mm-hmm. uh, also she was on America's Funniest People. I don't know if you guys ever watched that. Hated that show, but... Uh, <laughs> really? Cool. Yeah. Really? Yes, because America's Funniest Videos of people unintentionally being You funny. hate Dave Coulier? Uh, a little bit. And in that... <gasps> the in Jackalope? That, in that series... Oh my gosh, the Jackalope, Jackalope is maximum security prison Save right there. Save for America's Funniest People show. <laughs> But uh, she played a roller skating jester in a dream sequence on the soap opera Days of Our Lives. Yeah. Oh, wow. And uh, Paul Dini, one of the creators of the Harley, Harley Quinn character, yeah. saw her in this random role and went, hey, I kind of like that look. I kind of like that voice. And in fact, Arlene Sorkin's first and middle name is Arlene Francis, which is where yeah, Harlene, Harlene Francis, Francis Quinzel okay. comes from. So because of Arlene Sorkin playing a random, and I, I actually watched that clip. It's on YouTube. Uh-huh. It's bizarre, yeah. but that formed Harley Quinn. But so, how dangerous is she? I don't think she's, she's super, mortal. Yeah. No superpowers. Right. Though she keeps surviving her movies somehow. Yeah. She, she's pretty tough in Birds of Prey. She goes off in the Suicide Squad. She does. She does. Like, whoa. She also usually will have plenty of weapons on her. And she's proficient with them. She is. But... I don't. I don't know. I actually think because she is familiar with the place. And yeah, she'll escape eventually, right? Because well, remember, mi- in Arkham Asylum, the video game, like she is the one who's kind of I, making it all happen. I think she'll wait. I think she'll wait it out. I think it's okay to keep her in minimum security. I would agree as well. I, I don't see like things. I see her as crazy, not malicious, mm-hmm. and I don't think. I think keeping her in a jail cell would be sufficient. So yeah. minimum security. And I only see a few red flags. Like I wouldn't mind talking to her. You know, Stop. visiting. Dang her. It. Put her in maximums just so Ken doesn't flirt with her. Just I mean through through, through the bars. Be no. Like, hey, Harleen. That's why she's getting out. Oh, actually, that's true. That's probably true. The last seven times. Yeah. <laughs> that, <laughs> she's, was that was Ken. Ken I made her a duty. cake with a file in we it. We did not every have him time. On that shift. No, we, <laughs> Make a note. Don't put yeah, Ken on guys, a Harley Quinn shift. No, I don't even. There. I bought all those giant files and put them into cakes. <laughs> By the way, I'd like to inform you, we have now filled up half of our minimum security cells. Oh, oh uh-oh. Next up, Batman just dropped off Firefly. Take oh, that's my a, love, yeah, take my show. land. Take me where I cannot stand. Uh, Firefly uh, first appeared in June 1952 in Detective Comics. He's a criminal who, initially he was a criminal who used lighting effects to commit robberies, but he was then reimagined as a sociopathic pyromaniac, and he flies. Yeah, his name is Garfield Linz, and he actually tried to burn Gotham to the ground, but then a chemical factory blew up and uh, basically burned 90% of his body. And he became Freddy Krueger. Yes, essentially. And so he has an insulated battle suit, wings, jetpack, flamethrower, grenade launchers, and a flaming sword. Uh, he is a very clumsy villain, though. Yeah. Anytime you see him, they use him as a joke. He will be the upcoming villain, played by Brendan Fraser in Batgirl. Yeah. And so, huh. but he's never really all that intimidating. Fire is scary, let's be honest. And it seems like. His his uh, jetpack, for example, and the the flamethrower work against him more than. But for at the same him. time, his suit is supposed to protect him. Sure, I, but, I mean he's he's stopped easily, but it's still people are going to get hurt. I'm making the case to put him in maximum security just because that is a lot of fire, literal firepower. Yeah, in one person, and we need to put him nah. so he doesn't burn through nah. the bars or melt the plexiglass. 
I think it's okay. I think he will basically being stuck in a small space. He'll be like a, a grenade. I think he'll blow Military himself up. Military grade flamethrower, incendiary devices, grenades, napalm, smoke bombs. When, when has he ever been a threat? His plans haven't actually ever worked. He's a never taken over Gotham. A sword-like blade of superheated plasma. Yeah, he's got a lot of cool stuff, but he doesn't Basically know how to lightsaber. use them. lightsaber. He doesn't know how to use them. I'm really afraid of him cutting through that plexiglass. That seems like... His sword will probably get stuck in the plexiglass. I, 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 um, You're going to give a tier one to Firefly? The dude's made of... Well, he's not made of fire, but he's basically uh, someone who can fly and start fires. Yeah, but he's... I mean, he's... Obviously, he's burned his own body because of his own mistakes, right? He's not very proficient. He believes that he can see visions in the flame he flames he so creates. So he's, he's nuts. But Yeah, crazy but, with but fire. But he's not Joker nuts. He's not successful nuts. He's nuts like holds himself back. I'm saying, I'm saying medium because I, need, I think we need to save some of the bigger ones. I'm saying maximum because fire, fire, fire <laughs> in a crowded room. We'll, fire. Put, we'll say, hey, Mr. Freeze. <laughs> we'll put them next to each yeah. other. Let them battle it out. Mr. Freeze is in uh, is in maximum as well. I think Firefly is dangerous. I think he's a tier three villain, but he needs maximum security. Oh no, maximum security. Guys, I'm worried. Okay. Don't be worried. Except no, I'm not worried about him. But yeah, we have now just received uh, prisoner Solomon Grundy. Solomon Grundy, born, born on, on a Monday. Monday. So Solomon Grundy is essentially a lumbering zombie. He first appeared in October 1944. He's like an undead Hulk, is how I consider him. Yeah. Interesting. So Um, he was killed in 1895, so he's quite old, and was buried in a swamp. And then over the next 50 years, his body transformed. Part plant. Yes. And basically, he doesn't... (laughs) He's plant-based? Mm-hmm. Kind of. And he, he has no recollection of his past, who killed him or anything. He just kills... Whoever gets in his way. And he's gigantic. He's actually beat. If there's a hero in D, in the DC world, he's beat them. The only thing that stopped him from killing them is like another hero came and saved him at the last minute. Yeah. But he is just an unstoppable force. Mm, no. I, I think, I mean, first of all, his strength is varied throughout the year. Sometimes he's, you know, in Long Halloween, he's able to be beat by Batman. But later in another one, he's beating Superman. That doesn't make hey, man, sense. Hey, man, I used him in the Injustice video game on mobile all the time. Yeah. I mean, he has mystical invulnerability. He resurrection. Does. Energy absorption, but he's kind of like this. And like plant said, control. He's kind of like this mindless zombie. He like, isn't that the scariest he has thing? No, he, he has no memory of his name. Uh, he showed up at a hobo camp, and one of the few things he could recall that he was born on a Monday. So one of the hobos starts doing that nursery rhyme. He's like, "Oh, Solomon Grundy," and that became after, after he killed the, the hobos. I, I don't even think still doors would stop his fist from punching through. I do because I, I see him as kind of this like shuffling around. He's not particularly aggressive he's always aggressive i don't see him as aggressive in, in as the games as, in the cartoon as much as lumbering i see him as lumbering i see him as an angry hulk and he has energy absorption i don't know if he's angry nothing's stopping this that guy i think he's just confused but he's like he's nearly invulnerable but i don't see him as like an unstoppable juggernaut different universe yes i mean so it's, I, a, I, it's a min- I mean i say I, medium, medium i think security. he deserves maximum way more than firefly I think but he, I'm also I, worried because you gave up a tier one for Firefly. I, you give Mr. Freeze a tier one. Absolutely. The nice guy, Mr. Freeze, who just wants to help his wife. But Solomon Grande, uh, medium security. One I punch, think you put, him in, punch, you put him in a cell and he'll be confused. We should mention Batman's bringing all these to our, uh, our, our doorstep unconscious. So oh, yes. Thank we you. We put him in the cell. Then they'll mm-hmm. wake up. And I think he'll just be fine in medium security. I don't think you can contain the Hulk. He's not the Hulk. He is. He's Solomon Grundy. Born on a Monday. Monday's the worst day of the week. Uh, I am really nervous about Solomon Grundy, actually. Really? The yeah. physicality. Like, again, the experience uh, mostly from me is, is from video games. I put him in medium. It's not like I don't think scary. he's medium security, but I don't think he's maximum. I like how serious we're taking this. We really are. Um, <laughs> we're good guards. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Harley, what's up? Is it my second lunch break yet? Yeah, seriously. Plus, the undead thing freaks me out. So I'm going to give him maximum Guys, we cannot keep filling up maximum. Well, speed. actually, that's what I'm kind of worried about, There's too. Some dangerous people coming up. We'll get there. <laughs> so, no one's going to break out. It's fine. Well, now we have the Mad Hatter in for processing. Mad Hatter first appeared in Batman Comics in 1948. He's the Mad Hatter from uh, Lewis and Carroll. I mean, he's not the yeah. Mad Hatter, but his, he's... His name is Jarvis Tetch, and he's obsessed with Alice in Wonderland. Yes, and so he wears a hat, obviously, mm-hmm. and he uses mind control devices Usually in some sort of hat or something people wear, and then he can make them do whatever he wants, which is kind of terrifying. So in one story, he actually made donuts for a police station, 
and there was mind control substances in the donuts, and he was able to control them from there. Mm. Which that's probably the most devious thing he's done because truly he's mostly obsessed with women that he thinks is Alice yeah. from the story. In the game in yeah. Arkham City, I believe it is. Yeah, in the it's animated terrifying. series, he fell in love with this girl named Alice. Right. And her boyfriend proposed to her, but he's really jealous. And so he tried to kill him and make her uh, be mind controlled under him. And He also has used hypnosis to do mind control as well. Yes. So that's kind of his thing. And obviously there's a lot of comics, but this is a character that does not appear that often in other media. No. But I think if we put him, guys, in a medium security cell and just don't eat or wear anything he gives us... Why would you but Why would you be, be scary, fine. though, if you put him in medium? Because then he can't reach to the bars and try to put something on him. No, he's a tiny guy. He's a little guy. He's a little guy. That means he can get through the bars. No, he's not that small. No. He's, he's a little stubby. And guy. look, he can't like slide any cards or Mind throw anything control. at us. Only, Kent. only with devices. He's like, "Hey, Kent, check out these new sunglasses I got you." And you're like, "Oh, these would look great on Instagram." <laughs> so wait, I'm gonna put, the put them on, on, and all of a sudden you're shooting Zach in the face. But he's, but, but nah, I don't think he's that scary. I don't like the mind control aspect. I'm putting him in a medium security. I'm looking at the rest of this list and thinking he needs to go to minimum. Yeah, I'm going minimum. Medium, minimum. Ugh. Are we almost out of minimum? Fine. You get shot in the face then, Zach, because Kent's wearing his Instagram sunglasses. <laughs> you just threatened me with a shot to the face. Because uh, we're on a team here. We have five. Five slots have been filled up in minimum. We only have eight. There we go. Well, next up we have Clayface. So good luck with that. So Clayface first appeared in 1940 in Detective Comics, but he was a different version of Clayface. It was like yeah. literally so, he had a, a mask made of clay. Yeah, his name was uh, Basil Carlo. So based off Boris Karloff, basically, yeah. his origin is he was an actor. He was driven mad when they were remaking a, his classic horror film, and they weren't giving him the lead. And so he killed most of the cast and crew. Mm-hmm. And it was just a, a serial killer. And then if you go, if you jump to like the animated series, his name was Matt Hagen. And there's been many versions since then. And he's the giant clay face that yes. we know now. And yet, once again, still an actor. He shape shifts into other people. Like, and literally, like his, his, his body is made of clay, yes. so he can shape it into whatever he wants. And this all happened because he used a chemical where he wanted to stay young, and he was given it too was a much. a radioactive pool of protoplasm. Yes. And then he just became this giant hulking monster. And I love how he's been used in the games. I think he's, yeah. he is one of the most tragic characters. And unpredictably, like, sometimes he's good, sometimes he's bad, but he's terrifying all the time. Yeah. Uh, enhanced strength, endurance, durability, shape-shifting we already talked about. Can I tell you about why he's one of the most villainous villains here? Why? He killed Airbud in order to steal his role. Airbud. He ran over Airbud in one of the... Com- oh, actually, it was in the Harley Quinn cartoon. He ran over Airbud so he could be the dog in the movie. What? Yeah. <laughs> and so he played Airbud. That is that horrible? That's horrible. That's tier one right there. No. But I do feel like uh, Clayface in, in the Arkham Asylum game, he's behind a plexiglass cell and he just he keeps shifting. Every time you, you come back in the room, he's a right. different person. He's, you know, he's the warden. He's Commissioner Gordon. He's all these people. And I always knew it was Clayface, so I never let him out. So I think tier two is a perfect place to put him. I think tier one. Don't put Clayface in tier I one. I think he is terrifying. I think the fact that he, he will get out because he can be anyone. And we're not that smart. Uh, I think we're smart enough to know. We're looking up his the bio guy right in the now. Cell. The guy in the cell. Kent, we'll put a note on there. Mm-hmm. This is not. Don't open. Don't open this, Kent. You do wanna, not do anything. You want to run over more dogs? More dog He's actors? He's not going to get out of the place. What about the air buddies, Joel? What? <laughs> They're already gone. <gasps> what do you mean? What if uh, he became me? Would you not let me out? No. I would let you out. I'd actually test you. Thank you. I'd, yeah. say, I'd say, hey, Zach, can I tussle your hair a bit? And you'd be like, sure. And I'm like, See, you're not no, Zach. No. You imposter. <laughs> we'll skip Man Bat to come in. I think still door because then we can't even see, like he can't even trick us with the shape shifting. We're not going to be tricked by him. You don't think so? We know he's in there. It's like you said, but what we'll if Zach's behind the We'll change the number from cell number four to, to clay face cell. I mean, that makes sense, but what if Zach accidentally did get trapped in there? We should let him out. Sucks to be Zach. <laughs> Can he not... Is this, this version of the character can't, like, suddenly gain more sediment and become huge? Yes, he can. Because I, I keep seeing that. Like, does he stay one size, or does he actually grow? It's smaller or larger. Depends on the comic, Like, human size. He can be a normal human or be this giant monster. But I think we put him in a, a plexiglass cell. He's not getting any more sediment out of that. All right. I like it. Okay, okay. Tier two. Here, buns. We got it's some, Clayface. Got some scary He's so scary. Out. He's not that scary. He's, he's tragic. Big mud man. Next stop, <laughs> Mr. Bane. <laughs> really? I have to do it. <laughs> that was a, there was a big thud outside the door because Bane is a big dude. 
He first appeared in January 1993 in the Batman comic. Uh, he's a large, mask-wearing bulk of a man enhanced by a drug called Venom. Or he's using painkillers because his mouth hurts. Oh, How dare you? That was the worst part to that story. Bane was a darn good character yeah. until all of a sudden it's like, oh, he's using... It, this is in The Dark Knight Rises. He has to a mask to be a British gentleman. But then he's like, oh, yeah, this is just painkillers I have in my mask because so, my mouth hurts. I need a root canal. Therefore, I need a mask on 24-7. It hurts so bad when you need a root canal. <laughs> I've been there, and it's horrible. Two Advil will not do the job. This is an interesting thing because the two film versions of this character I don't think are very good uh, interpretations. They're of the polar character. opposites, too. Yeah, you've, got, you've got dumb, huge In bomb. Batman and Robin, Bane. Bane. He yeah, says, bomb. He sets down the bombs every single oh. time he sets down the bomb. Bane. Well, bomb. and he's over reliant on the on the venom yes. that he uses to bulk up. Whereas Bane in the Dark Knight Rises, he's, he's just a physical presence. He's extremely strong. Yes. Yeah. No, he needs to take the venom every twelve hours, or he will suffer debilitating side effects. It's they, true. They don't really go into venom in the Dark Knight Rises, right? Because that's a Marvel character. <laughs> no, it's not venom. It's it's uh, it's. You, uh, not euthanizers. It's morphine. <laughs> yeah, it's basically, yeah. Yeah. I So, not great interpretations of this character. I mean, when you talk about the actual like comic versions and the origins of this character, well, this he, is the, the man Spanish who, Mexican, uh, he, Spanish Mexican, Spanish <laughs> Mexican, Luchador. Yeah. He broke the bat. He's the only one to break the bat. He broke, literally, Boom. took he, him over his leg and broke He his caused bat. nightfall, broke which they bat. do do in he Dark actually, Knight Rises. He personally broke every villain out of Arkham Asylum. So that he could just cause chaos in Gotham, yep. and then break the and bat. Where, he wanted to wear Batman down and so then fight him. He's not just like a strong guy. He's not just this jock. He is incredibly brilliant. But and that's he, what's scary yeah, about him. He's brilliant. He's he's conniving. He's scheming. And then he put himself to like the physical limit of of what was possible from a person. Mm-hmm. And then because of that, they're like, "Well, now we're going to give you the venom because we think you can take it." Did you mention his origin all the way? No, I did not. So. Buzz, he, buzz. So in the comics, he was born to serve the life sentence of his father. So he spent most of his life in prison. So he was Wait, go bo- over that again. His dad yes, got yes, put yes. in jail. Yes. His dad escaped, and they said, okay, we'll take your son, and he'll finish yeah, your Yeah, your sentence. young son. What the heck? Yeah, so he commits his first his dad, murder. dad, by the way, King Snake. Yes. At eight years old, is another prisoner, and he also carries a little teddy bear named Osito. Osito. And there's a hidden knife in the bear. And he became the king of the prison, which I think would happen to Arkham as well. Oh, also, he killed Alfred. Shut up. He killed no. Alfred. Yeah. In, in the comics? Yes. Horrible. No, he's really intimidating in the comics. Obviously, after he breaks the bat, Batman will get revenge on him later. Sure. But it's well, funny. Uh, as Azrael will. Well, Azrael and then Batman later. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Azrael, for sure he did. We're nerd getting al- geeky. N- nerd alert. Okay. Ding, 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 ding. Ding. I, why, I, why are we reading these Batman comics in Arkham <laughs> yes. Asylum? <laughs> when I was playing the game, guys. When I was playing the video game guy. about what's going on right now. See, this is tough because I love the character, but also I think he does have a huge weakness here that could that make if you him knock deb- one of his little mouth things out. He's like, oh, I can't. Or, or the pipe behind anymore. his head, based on the you know, depending on the character, right? You're not so getting to that pipe. There is a unless weakness. you do the punch combination and jump on his back. I think as smart as he is and as strong as he is, he is a tier one. But I'm almost thinking I don't want to waste a tier one no, spot on him. No, he is absolutely someone we need to put in tier one. He is bulk and he is brains. This is a dangerous, dangerous villain. But you don't who is think... capable of lifting three to four tons. Yeah, Solomon Grundy though too. Solomon Grundy's not as not as smart as so Bane. You want to give up a maximum for Bane? For Bane, yes. Yeah. He broke the bat. <sighs> yeah, geez. I'm totally cool with that. Okay. Yeah. If, we'll he has, if he literally has any venom serum with him, we're hosed. Yeah. Yeah. So he needs to be in maximum. his armpit. That's where people keep ammo. <laughs> Where's I'm, the I'm ammunition? Where's the ammunition? Next up is Victor Zaz. Hello, sir. Um, what's that on your skin? That's weird. I, I don't. I don't want. I don't want. That. Can we just send him somewhere else? Uh, he's got so a weird Victor, guy. Victor Zaz first appeared in 1992 in the Batman comics, and I, I, I specify Batman or detective because mm-hmm. that doesn't really matter. But uh, he is a sadomasochistic and psychopathic serial killer who carves a tally mark onto himself for each of his victims, and he has a lot of tally marks. Yeah. They're, they're saying, and I think it's actually more than this, but uh, it's reported he has more than 143 marks on his body. I think it's a lot more at this point. Probably. Yeah. Uh, you got his origin? His origin, think about It's a Wonderful Life, right? So the Jimmy Stewart character goes to a bridge. Yeah. And instead of meeting an angel, uh, Victor Zaz meets a homeless guy. Who tries to stab him. Yeah. And then he kills the homeless guy, and he goes, hey... That felt good. I felt good. I yeah. liberate people from this life. And so he sees himself doing everyone a favor, super evil, that he's liberating them from life. And so uh, he's absolutely horrible. He calls his victims zombies. 
just yeah. straight up evil. He's very, very agile. He is an expert hand to hand combatant. Normal dude. The expert with knives. Yeah. But terrifying, Ken. He terrifies me. Yeah, Zaz me too. Terrifies me. Isn't that weird? I don't know why, because he is just a normal dude with knives. Yes. But he terrifies me. He's completely unpredictable. Yeah. And I think one of us is we're, we're gonna get stabbed. Probably. For sure. Putting him yeah. away. Yeah. But like what if you just step back? There's bars. He throws knives too. Mm. He he needs I, I'm i I'm recommending maximum security for Victor. Oh Zaz. no way. I think he's medium. Don't no. waste don't waste this on Zaz. He scares me, Kent. Sure, he scares you, but behind plexiglass, he's still a normal guy. But I wouldn't put him with bars because he can throw knives. Okay. I think medium. I'm, I'm with you on that one, Kent. Mm-hmm. Let's put him in medium. But he's scary. I agree, Joel. I ain't, I'm not taking that shift. <laughs> well, you, you can't pick your shift. You're, no, no, you're the new I'm t- guy. I'm taking double shift on Clayface so Kent doesn't open the door like an idiot. <laughs> he was Harley for a little bit. I'm also taking Kent's Harley <laughs> shift. No! So you I can't quit. go near <laughs> I think you're going to be fired before you quit. <laughs> I just made a cake, though. No! Check that cake. <laughs> um, we're also probably going to need to reconsider the next shift for Kent as well, uh, because Batman just dropped off Catwoman. Yeah, Kent's not getting the shift either. No, not at all. I don't even think Batman Kent's should get the shift. Is it, is it Halle Berry Catwoman, or is it like Michelle Pfeiffer? Does it matter, It's Michelle Kent? Pfeiffer. Uh, it's, look, does it matter? No, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> look, if it's Halle Berry, we can play basketball. She's awesome. So Cat, uh, Cat, <laughs> Catwoman debuted as the cat in Batman number one yes. in 1940, but she didn't have a costume. Yes, the and most a, common one is Selena Kyle. Yes, and then a couple uh, comics later, she actually wore like a full fur mask of a cat. Mm-hmm. But later on, she finally got that just that little uh, cat mask, and she usually wears a, a tight one piece suit and uses a bullet as, as her weapon. Yep. Uh, original story: she was a flight attendant, but a plane crash left her an amnesiac haze, <laughs> and she loved animals because of her dad's pet store, and became Catwoman after that because she yeah. wanted to be a criminal. I I got to be honest, I love the origin in Batman Returns. Yes, it's great. It's, it's, it's best so version of the character. Bizarre. It's so weird and it fits great. It, I love it, it really does. Just like her eyes fluttering, the cats all surrounding her. It really is kind of an eerie moment. Great. So some of her abilities: combat prowess, martial arts, contortion, hacking, yep, clawed gloves, expert burglar, flirting skills. Kent's not doing this one. Please. <laughs> uh, she has sharp retract- retractable claws. Yeah. and uh, she has what are they called? The 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 bole- bol- bolas mm-hmm. that yes. she can throw around. So she actually had a no-killing rule for most of her comic run, and then it changed after dealing with Black Mask, who she did kill. And well, so, and she, initially she was kind of this villain, straight-up villain to Batman. Yeah. But then, like, I think it was after the after the 1960s, after Eartha Kitt and uh, Julie Newmar and, and uh, one who played her in the movie, I can't remember. Mm-hmm. After that, she kind of became this anti-hero, tragic character, love interest. Love interest, for, for the most part. It, she actually left Batman at the altar a couple of years ago. What? Really sad. I think that's one of her Me most ouch. villainous moves. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, no. Perfect. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm putting her in minimum security. She's not a villain. She's an anti-hero. Well, here's the thing. I saw her helping out Batman. I saw them making out on the side of the road. No, here's the thing. No. She, she is great at burglary and sneaking in and out of things. So she probably will break out. But if she breaks well, out... So what? I'm actually cool if she breaks out. Like she has. I'm pu- sure you are. <laughs> Here's my card, <laughs> guys. You won't let me have the shift got anymore. Got my address on there, Catwoman. <laughs> I've got a lot of jewels in my safe. Uh, I like cats. Yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> I like I'm the perv guard. <laughs> okay, there's no more hot I'm on my villains. S- my left. six yes, lunch. There count. is. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you think I haven't thought about this? <laughs> All guys, right, so I love all- this job. This is actually why I applied. <laughs> Is Catwoman going to be in there? (laughs) (laughs) All right. Next up is Ventriloquist with Scarface. All right. So this is kind of a jokey one, but he was a presence a lot in in Batman the Animated Series. Really around since 1988. Kind of a creepy character. So his name is Arnold Wesker. Well, one of the versions of it. There's like like tons of different ones. So that version, he suffered from disassociative identity (laughs) disorder. It's just whoever holds on to the puppet. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's more than that. I know. So he, he, like, he's this old man, right? So he accidentally killed a man in a bar fight and was sent to Blackgate, where his fellow inmate was making a dummy named Woody. And so Arnold killed the other inmate, escaped with Woody, and he killed two other guards on the way out. So he is a killer, but it's more repressed anger. And that's why, so Woody actually became Scarface, the little mobster. The little Tommy gun holding puppet. And so it's an old man who is really meek, but he kills and gives orders through Scarface the puppet. Yeah. And he, I was going to say, he is a criminal genius. He uh, can throw Scarface his is. voice. He can throw his voice. Although that's he, an ability. He can't, they can't say the letter B mm-hmm. when he's doing the ventriloquism. So instead of Batman and Robin, he says Gatman and Roggen. 
<laughs> you try and do a B while not moving your lips. I'm I'm scared already. Uh, 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 no, the aliens from Mars He has no superhuman powers, but he knows basic hand to hand combat. He usually. Uh, Wesker does carry a handgun with him. Yeah. And Scarface, Scarface has his, his Tommy gun. Tommy gun, yeah. But I think it's minimum security. He's really only scary be- when there are goons that actually follow the orders of Scarface. Yeah. Otherwise, no. It's Because it's literally a puppet. Yes. So we're all we're saying minimum security? You guys yeah. are. Mm-hmm. Well, you, out, you outrank me. I've only been here a day. <laughs> That's how badly I'm I doing I just had this another job. lunch. <laughs> So many lunches. I was real. My wife overpacked for today because we didn't know how this day was going to go. It's a long night. It's been a long night. It's yeah. a long Halloween. Yeah. Uh, what's it's one bad oh day? Oh my word! Is that even a human? Uh, okay. Killer Croc has just showed up, aka Waylon Jones. Yes, he first appeared in 1983 uh, in the Detective Comics. Yes, we know him as an alligator wrestler and a sideshow freak turned mobster. He was born with an extreme form of. Here we go. Zach, I should have you read this. Uh. Epidermolytic, epidermolytic, whatever, hyperkeratosis. Uh, his mother died in childbirth and his dad abandoned him. We're just going to glaze over that. That's, it's fine. that. that's that Mary Poppins song. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> epidermolytic hyperkeratosis. Yay! <laughs> Turns you into a baby croc. Anyway, so he ends up in jail and he actually killed an inmate who made fun of his looks. Uh, he had a really rough childhood because he had like this reptile disease. To me, he feels like the closest thing to a mutant we get in the DC universe. Yes. Uh, eventually, he makes it to Gotham, and he is kind of—he has a chip on his uh, alligator shoulder. He kills everyone who treats him horribly. He wants to be a mob boss, but he is kind of like this bit player. What? Wouldn't you say, dude? He's a scary, scary oh, okay. force. It's, it's Are you talking about in the game? I'm talking about in Arkham Asylum and Arkham City. Bite player. Oh, he's a bite player. Like you have to go down this long shaft to his cell, and like they're feeding him raw meat. And well, and when uh, yeah, they portray him very well in the game because when you're walking through the sewer. Mm-hmm. And you're terrified of him jumping you up. Make, and you make too much noise and he'll pop out of the water. But I think he's, he's he, able to lift up to two tons. Razor sharp teeth. Yeah. I mean, he claws. Gets, scale he like skin. gets captured easily. He's in the Suicide Squad. So, I mean, he's not that much of a threat. I can never. His skin is nearly impenetrable to weapons fired from a distance. Like mm-hmm. You cannot shoot him from a distance and get anything. He has an enhanced sense of smell, Kent. Once he's become familiar with a person's scent, he can track them from miles away. So your axe body spray is telling. I... How did you know? You I know, can smell it. The problem is I can never tell them apart between him, like killer gator. It's just always a confusing. There's a killer gator? Okay. Because you don't know if it's a gator or a croc. Oh, God. Hey, <laughs> depending on what part of the world, they call him killer gator. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Uh, he's a, he, and this is actually in canon. He was able to tear a bank vault door off its hinges with minimal effort. Yeah, he tells horrible jokes in Suicide Squad, though. No, I think he's a, he, he's a threat. cannot judge his characters based on Suicide Squad. He's a threat. Oscar-winning character here. And I think we should put him behind the plexiglass in medium security because Mm-mm. it's going to be like watching a zoo exhibit. He's Bane with sharp teeth. No. This is, this is a maximum security. No, the guy will rip your head off, Kent. No, he doesn't have the brains of Bane. The Bane brains. He <laughs> is kind of an idiot. You know, he's I, I he's a him, wannabe mobster. No, I put him above Solomon Grundy but below Bane in, in intellect. But he's got much more dangerous qualities, I feel. Yeah, but he's a beast. He's a beast, but he's not that smart. I think he's like lame in Suicide Squad, and he's kind of OP yeah. in, in the Arkham games. <gasps> I think he generally sits somewhere in the middle. So I, I think medium security is Oh my gosh, we're going to die. <laughs> we're we're going to die anyways. <laughs> Guys just killed us all. Killer Croc and medium. Fine. Nobody's going to break out. That never happens around here. Hey, uh, what kind of flowers do you guys think Harley Quinn likes? Stop! What's it, sir, is it pronounced Raish or Raz? Raz Depends who you Mr. talk to. Mr. Raz Al Ghul. So Raz Al Ghul is being brought unconscious onto our porch now. He first appeared in uh, Batman Comics in 1971. The yeah. Demon's Head. Yes, he's the leader of the League of Assassins. Yeah, he's lived for many centuries due to the Lazarus Pits. Yes. yes. Green goo that he goes and lays in and gets regenerated. It's also called Bacta. <laughs> Back to tank. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Triggered. Uh, so his goal is to save the Earth from ecological devastation, and he tries to do that by destroying most of the Earth's population. So he's Thanos. Oh. He's Thanos, except for he literally will go to each city and burn it to the ground. He didn't just snap his fingers. Yes. Mm-hmm. But he started uh, many breakouts at Arkham and Black A and has escaped before. Uh, he's killed thousands of people. Uh, and granted, not one by one. But yes. he has literally caused He'll release the like a biological weapon or a virus or something like that. Right. And I think why he is so scary is because his, well, his leadership of ability above all. Uh, just confession. I've always found uh, Razor Gold to be kind of a boring 
Batman villain. Really? I, just because he's not as colorful as the other ones. Sure. He kind of just looks like a regular guy, and he's just holding those, you know. He's lead, but he's but he knows guys. everything. Like, he is literally above the, the world's largest terrorist organization and has tried to purify the earth. He's good at combat. I'll give him that. Immortality, was, swordsmanship, martial arts training. Immortality over, if he goes in the pit Over millennia. Yeah, but he is, when is he not in the pits, though? When he's in our prison. Uh, possesses some magic power, uh, tactical analysis, supernatural knowledge, high intellect, and weapon mastery. He's also one of the few people who know, from the what detective, I hear, yes. that, uh, that Bruce Wayne is Batman. I just feel like he is the, he's the kingpin. He knows more than Different any universe. other villain. Yeah, sure. But he knows more than anyone else, I think, because of the death count he has. I think he's a threat to the world, not just Batman, not just, just to us. I think he mm. needs to be put away for good. I well, we're that's we're putting all these people away he for need, good. Well, what are you talking about? Yeah, because they're. <laughs> but I think we need to almost age him out behind that still door. No, I think Plastic Eyes would just find he is a he's a human person. He does have a lot of experience in the world. He's been around for hundreds magic, of years. With magic, <laughs> minimal magic. I, I looked it up. I looked at his magical powers. It's not very. And not I very think great. he has more combat skills than anyone else. Right, but we put him. We put him behind plexiglass. Yeah, once he's behind bars, what's you don't he think do? he'll know the one punch to get out of that thing? No, he's he's Hannibal Lectering it in there. He's going to be talking to a bunch of people and talking about Hannibal how Hannibal cool Lecter he is. got out. Yeah, well, this he wasn't in Arkham. <laughs> <laughs> He'd still get out. But I, I, I think this is a medium he, security situation. I think he is one of the most over. He's omnipresent not, villains you can have. He's not superhuman. He's just been around a long time. I think it's a mob boss situation, and if you restrict his ability to coordinate, you really cut down a lot of what he can do. The, now, I will the say magic, this. The swords. Magic is not a big thing. Is Plexi, it not? Plexiglass has saved us from a lot of things in the last couple of years. It can save us from him, too. Magic? Yeah. Totally. He doesn't have strong Supernatural magic knowledge. skills. That it exists in this world. It ha- no, I've, I looked up his magic, and it was like, I don't know, he pulled a rabbit out of a hat. It wasn't that impressive, whatever it was. That's a ton of. I'll let you know, gents. We have filled four maximum security, five medium security, and seven low security. So what he did you give him? Medium. Did you give him medium? I think he goes medium. Okay. We're dead. Because <laughs> of Killer Croc, not because of Raja, <laughs> Raja, Raja Ghoul. We're dead because of Mad Hatter, let's be honest. <laughs> We're dead because you let... <laughs> Harley Quinn out of her cell. Guys, she's so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this guy's this guy is interesting looking. It's Hush. Shh. Hush first appeared in January 2003. AKA Dr. Thomas Elliot. Do we have to play up the joke still? Uh, yeah. No, <laughs> Please no. don't. Is this NPR? <laughs> no, but he's I was going to say there's a 12 issue storyline called Batman Hush. If you haven't read it, I recommend reading it. It's awesome. It's a very good comic series. Uh, he he looks like he's got, he's got a bandaged face. He has double guns. He's kind of a, he's shrouded in mystery. Yeah. So the, the story is he was childhood friends with Bruce. Yeah, like you said, similar to Black Mask. There is a he's similar. He's basically a Batman, uh, yeah. Black Mask ripoff, but with but, a better backstory. But, but he's a surgeon, right? So he can. With a medical degree. That's yeah, he, he can cut himself to look like Bruce Wayne, which he often does. I know. I like how Clayface can instantly look like someone else. Uh-huh. But this guy has to do like prolonged plastic surgery to look yeah. like someone else. And one of the things I love about that Hush storyline is, well, spoiler alert. He and Riddler work together mm-hmm. to uh, manipulate all the villains, even Superman, to stop Batman in one night. And it's an awesome story. Hush, he's a normal guy, though. Like, he, he does fight Batman a lot, but usually, well, always loses. He's just a guy. He, and he just hates Batman. It's not like he wants to kill anyone else. You know, the, does or he Bruce, hate, I should yeah, say. He, this, he's interesting because he's villain to Bruce Wayne. Mm-hmm. Specifically, yes. Batman, I think, is like a, another thing, but he's going after Bruce Wayne, which the, most of these villains are not. But like we said with Mister Freeze, if you get in his way of getting to Bruce Wayne, you're gonna pay. Are you? Yes. What's he gonna plastic surgery you to death? He has guns. Oh, he on. does have guns. He's he has a marksman, but twin he's not a... M nineteen eleven forty five caliber pistols. Yeah, guns can miss. M one nine one one. I don't know how to say that again. Name. <laughs> it's probably a thing. I think. I think we. we we use one of our... Is it our last? This would be our last yeah. minimum. Minimum security. Toss them in. Okay, let's do it. We are now done. Full up in our tier three minimum security. Okay. I feel comfortable with that. Okay. Well, let's let's see how we do. Next up is Mr. Two-Face. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did you want to put him in the minimum yes, security? Yes, because he's like... He's as threatening as Hush. Mm, I think he has, so, he has more uh, leadership. Two Face first appeared in 1942 in the Detective Comics. Uh, he had half good, half evil. One side is kind of dark and twisted; the other side looks normal because he used to be Harvey Dent. Yes, 
many origin stories. I think the one in the cartoon is awesome. Mm-hmm. In the, With car- the explosion, yeah, in the comic. So he's Harvey Dent, like you said. Uh, because of his abusive father, he developed bipolar disorder and schizophrenia, and then so and he became this you know very famous lawyer. Helped Batman and uh, Commissioner Gordon quite a bit. And then in a courtroom, actually, this is the one thing Batman Forever probably got right. Acid was thrown in his face by a mob boss. Oh, girl. So yeah. Tommy Lee Jones is the worst the in that worst. role. The worst in that role. That Could was so wrong for Billy him. Billy D. Williams. <laughs> Could have been so so did we want Billy D. Williams? So hey, fun fact, he only made, uh, Two-Face only made, <laughs> even though he, w- he was there in 1942, he only made three appearances in the 1940s and appeared twice in the 1950s. Because apparently they dropped a lot of the more serious villains for more kid friendly villains. During that oh, time. Okay, there was kind of a thing it's about these kind of gas people freaking out about comics and kids, and so they they softened them. Yeah. So I mean, look, he he rules by the game of chance, right? Like that's yeah. that's how he commits his murders or lets someone go. It's going to be a fifty fifty every time. And, and like, I'm not that afraid of him, though he does have power and influence with lackeys. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, we've already used Tier 3, right? Yep. Yeah. He's medium. I think medium security well, even though he can use his coin to hypnotize people, apparently. Okay. Uh, in Detective Comics 563 and Batman number 397. And I got to just throw it. It's a Tier 1 villain. But he could get a coin app. Yeah. You know, <laughs> instead of using a coin. Uh, I, this is a great guy, but, I mean. A he great is, guy? He's just a guy. Yeah, Zach and him used to be college buddies. I, I like Mr. Dent. I voted for him. You call him Dent? How so come our it? accents come and go, guys? <laughs> hey, it's Harvey Dent. <laughs> All right. Medium security he goes. Oh, no. Hide Kent. Hide <gasps> Kent again. Where is Here she? she comes. Where is she? <laughs> poison, poison Ivy. She knows what kind of flowers Harley Ivy, likes. Ivy. <laughs> poison Ivy. Uh, Pamela Isley. Yeah, it is. First appeared in <laughs> what 19- does that mean? <laughs> Stay away. She's First lying. appeared in 1966, and she is a botanist and biochemist who has, who's basically she's a plant woman. Yes, uh, she uh, wear usually has vines and uh, like a one piece suit and uh, variations to her skin tone, and she uses plant toxins and pheromones to change people's minds. Why yeah. are we so aware about the variation of her skin tone, Joel? Because I know she's green. Some uh, we always see lots of her skin. <laughs> Oh, it's true. It's true. It's crazy. Yeah. It's true. So her origin, she was seduced by her college professor, and he basically wanted to test on her with poisons and toxins. But eventually she got revenge once she became evil. And this uh, professor died in a car accident after a mysterious fungal overgrowth. And so she controlled oh, plant he should use to kill him. <laughs> Tough acting, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> So not a sponsor. She is very, very dangerous. She commonly releases suffocating spores or Gotham City. She's naturally deadly. She only needs the elements really to kill anyone. And she is fine with killing people because she doesn't care about human life. She only cares about plant life. Yeah, she is a bioterrorist. Yeah, and she has giant Venus flytrap that she'll feed people to. Oh my gosh, that was the hardest level for me when I yeah. first played it. Uh, she has immunity to toxins, poisons, and pathogens. She regenerates. She is a genius level intellect because Fair- she's a biologist. Pheromone control. She's an expert seductress. It's yeah. here. So is she exclusively a carnivore? Or would it be awkward if she was a vegan? Yeah, it'd be awkward. Ooh. Yeah, she's on the keto diet. I never thought about that. Right? Yeah, she eats a lot of grain. But I mean, that's still, you know, plants. Yeah. So she's, uh, she's just a meditarian. She's partly inspired, by the way, by the titular character in Nathaniel Hawthorne's short story, Rappuccini's Daughter, which is about a, a woman who tends to poison his plants and she becomes resistant to them, but then her, she starts poisoning other people. Okay. Little Gentlemen, little are we putting her in our last medium security Maximum. Spot? She's got to go maximum. She's she she'll once, break out super she easy. She once down, took it on a whole skyscraper with giant vines. Yeah. And I think we need to put her in maximum security just so to keep her away from, from Kent. Kent. What yes. about the window? Can we put a window in the room? Nope. No. Steel. Uh, steel door. Oh. Get you away from her. <laughs> All right. We're, we're no longer protecting the prisoners from <laughs> Gotham. <laughs> we're protecting, we're protecting the them from Kent. Kent. I'll just bring a little plant for her, though. And then no. it'll probably eat me. Kent's like, here's a flower, and the flower will strangle him. Yeah. It's like, oh, it's a plant. It's Audrey, too. Here's, uh. here's a tulip, because I like your tulips. <laughs> and then she'll strangle you with the <laughs> petals. I'll die with a smile on my face. <laughs> That's another character. <laughs> hey, good right. call. Good call. But Batman just dropped off Scarecrow. Oh, don't just say it like that. Oh, Batman just dropped out Scarecrow. Who's next? Hey, Scarecrow. So Scarecrow first appeared in uh, Autumn 1941 in World's Finest Comics. He's a lanky former professor of psychology who uses a variety of experimental toxins and psychology and psychological tactics to exploit the fears and phobias of his victims and adversaries. He wears a burlap sack for yes. a mask. Dr. Jonathan Crane. 
I first saw him in the cartoon. Right. Mm-hmm. And they they have like two different um, artistic depictions of him. Yeah. The second one is definitely more scary. Mm-hmm. And the character, I think, has done, been done really well in the Nolan movies. In the, in games. the games, especially. He has like syringes it's, for fingers. Yes. It's interesting that he's in all three Nolan movies. Yeah. You know, it's, it's and having Killian Murphy as the actor is amazing. Yeah. yeah. It's great. Uh, he's a genius in psychology. He uh, is an expert martial artist and hand to hand combatant. And of course, he uses fear inducing gases and toxins. Yes. The thing that kind of sets him apart from a lot of like maybe mob bosses in Gotham, he doesn't do it for wealth. He wants to study what's going on. Like Gotham when he poisons sees. Gotham, which he has done several times, it's his he guinea does pigs. it. Yeah, it's his guinea pigs, which is super gross. Yeah. Did you give origin? I did not. So he was bullied as a kid because everyone called him Ichabod Crane. He's a very skinny kid. And then, like you said, he, was, he taught at Gotham University and he would test the students' fears. He got fired. And then he got revenge on everyone mm-hmm. in the school. And some origin story also say that Hugo, uh, Hugo, Hugo Strange, Strange yes, uh, kind of t- helped train him in the fear toxin. Mm-hmm. And you do when you get this fear toxin, and you see your worst fears. So I just want you to imagine, guys, if we were to put him anywhere but in maximum security, he would spray you with fear gas, and Kent would see nothing but sharks with ketchup and eggs in their mouth. No! Coming no! at them. I can't. So, so, that's horrible. So I know. The plexiglass isn't that airtight? No. I mean, they have to breathe, right? Well, they have to breathe in the steel door as well. No, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing. We just need the most airtight lock. Yeah. I just think he knows. He, he's like He's a psychologist as well. He could mess with our minds just by talking to us. Also... Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to read this. Despite his scrawny build, Crane is a skilled martial artist who uses his long arms and legs in his personal combat style known as violent dancing. <laughs> <laughs> Been there. <laughs> also, uh, if he gets enough toxin in him, he actually can get mm-hmm. some, I think it is venom or something like that. But he gets venom, he becomes the monster called Scare Beast, where he emits the fear toxins from his body. Yeah, no, this is, this is a big problem. Yeah, because if we get infected with the fear toxin, the night's going it's really over. poorly. My, yes, my eighth over. lunch will be ruined. <laughs> eight my lunches. Sandwich, my sandwich will You'd start. You'd be like, where's the bathroom? Me. There's no bathroom here at Arkham <laughs> Asylum. <laughs> Why am I in Wayne Manor? <laughs> yeah. Uh, maximum? Yes. Maximum for Scarecrow. Okay. We still have one remaining medium security and two remaining maximum security slots. Okay. For okay. our last I think we're three. saving. We're saving up here. Okay. Okay. And uh, Mr. Cobblepot has been dropped off. This is the penguin. Oh, yeah. I've been wondering where he's been. Yeah, how about him? He's a little guy. Uh, so he first appeared in 1941 in Detective Comics. And he is a mobster who wears a monocle, a top hat, and a tuxedo, has umbrellas, mm-hmm. and usually short, fat, and has a long nose. So he was bullied for his looks as a child. Guys, let's just take a break. Can we pause the show. Yeah. Quit bullying people. They're okay. going to become Batman villains. Yeah. <laughs> Like, everyone stop it. The more you know. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, stop it. Get some help. Wow. Also, be a good parent. You know? (laughs) Yes. Are you going to get murdered? Don't try to kill your kids. Although you get Black Mask and Hush, they both were good parents, and they still got killed by their kids. Oh, no. No, they weren't great parents. The Waynes, those guys rocked. Did they? Depends who you talk to. Did they? Court of Owls? Anyway, so (laughs) according to sources, when Penguin was young, his father died of bronchial pneumonia because he walked in the rain without an umbrella. And so the Penguin's overprotective mother made sure that he had one at all times after. So there's the origin of the umbrella. Also, his parents owned a bird shop that was repossessed after his mother died. And so he... A bird shop? Uh, it was a bird shop. That is what <laughs> that is what the villains wiki says. A bird shop. Was, oh, you repossess my bird Look, shop. There's a pet store called Bird World down the street, <laughs> and it was terrifying because they were giant parrots. Anyways, a bird shop. And so he turned to a life of crime because the shop was taken away. Yeah. I think the thing about the penguin is he's like a cockroach that never dies. Like he's kind of a punk. No, he's right? he's one of those weird Batman villains that is able to live in high society yes. and the criminal underworld at the same time. Yeah. Confession, I fully put him in, in a minimum security cell because I'm like, he's a bald, fat little dude. What's he going to do? But then I remembered his umbrella mm-hmm. and how he has everything from uh, shooting ones and ones that shoot gas and ones that have knives in them, a mini helicopter. He has bombs that can come out of there. Like The guy has gadgets. And he can bite your nose off, Joel. Oh, yeah. I think, I think of all the gang lords in Gotham, he is the best one. Mm-hmm. I think he's the most effective... Warlord in Gotham. Yeah. And yeah. he's also uh, skilled in judo, fencing, nin- nin- ninjutsu, and bare knuckle boxing. Yeah. 
I really look forward to his portrayal in the new The Batman movie. Yeah. Looks interesting. Same. But, but I, I mean, he's because we have a medium, he's a medium. He's right? our medium slot. It's our last medium. So we're only going maximum of these last well, two. I guess these last two are maximum by, by, by default. We have those cells so open. Few. Yeah, well, it's... Uh, the next... question is, are we going to let Kent near anywhere near him? Well, he, this guy is, you know, good looking, I guess. It's Deathstroke. Oh, he deserves it. Is he the one played by Ryan Reynolds? <laughs> Stop that. So Deathstroke appeared in the new Teen Titans in 1980. Ooh, you you say that, but like he's killed the Teen Titans. Like he's um, terrifying. He's an armored masked villain with half of his face black and the other half orange. Lots of weapons. And he wears an eye patch when he doesn't wear his mask. He, he kind of has a Captain America origin story that turns really bad. So he signed up for active service when he faked his age at age 16. Uh, he mastered every fighting form and he quickly... He being Slade Wilson. Slade Wilson. Quickly became lieutenant. And then he was given a chemical to withstand truth serum. And then basically that kind of killed him, put him into a coma. But when he woke up, it gave him 90% use of his brain. He could use 90% of his <laughs> brain when we only use 10%, Ken? It's amazing. What? And that basically be- made him physically, mentally superhuman. Yes. Although uh, his his wife, who was also his trainer, yeah. uh, they ended up marrying after... It's never a good idea. After their son got killed, she blamed him and shot him in the eye, which yeah. is why he wears that eye patch. That's dark. Yeah. So he's like, I would say he's the tougher Deadshot, who we talked about earlier. Deadshot, to me, kind of feels like a punk. Deathstroke in every iteration I've seen him in is actually pretty scary. Yeah, he's he was originally called Deathstroke the Terminator. Ooh, yeah, but they had to, after he came out four years before the movie came out. But yeah, they, they've dropped that since he just sure. Deathstroke. He, he, and much like many of these other villains, he crosses into other DC worlds, like you said, Teen Titans and stuff. But whenever he fights Batman, he usually wins in the fight. See, he's a much better fighter. Granted, he doesn't have money. Yeah, he doesn't have the money, <laughs> but he's he's killed other heroes. He does he, have a healing factor. Yes, much like Deadpool. Yeah, uh, I'm just saying. But did you know Deadpool is stolen from saying, Deathstroke? I know, but just the fact Slade that Wilson, Deadpool, Wilson. Deathstroke, and Deadshot, I'm like, stop. It's too confusing. But that's the thing. Deathstroke started it, right? Like he was before yes. Deadpool. Deadpool and then is Deadpool was funny. And Deadpool popular. is a parody of Deathstroke. Deadshot came first. Well, so they did it better with Deathstroke. Death, yeah. Deathstroke is by far like this imposing, intimidating character, and he has been made a joke because Deadpool's a joke. I think Deathstroke's kind of OP. Just saying that. And OP, he is a little bit. OP means overpowered. Yeah, no, I know. actually yeah. agree. Uh, but I just he, don't find him that interesting of a character, except he, for I, when he came on Arrow, I was like, that's when I kind of oh, went, Oh, season okay. two, right? Yeah. I went, okay, this guy is kind of intimidating. He's also in Titan season two. Very intimidating. Okay. And just one little short little scene in the in the Snyderverse. Yes. Yeah. Uh, which is, is a bummer. Joe, a bummer. It Joe cool. Magaling. You know, like, it well, was a bummer that uh, the, cool. Le- the Lex Luthor portrayal in that movie. You're right. Stop. Actually, I've been super excited to see it. Joe Magaling would have been great. And it, the, the actual character in that, like, he looked perfect. Yes. I was so excited to see that, but it never did. Yeah, and happen. he will never stop a mission until it's done. I think he's super intimidating, and he's tier one. I think he deserves tier one. Yeah, this is... <laughs> maximum security. This is not an accident, like, oh, no, we're stuck out. with this. It, this it's is a good the idea. fact that he does have the superhuman intelligence, superhuman strength, superhuman reflexes, and healing factor that I went, yeah, let's put him in maximum. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, deadly presence. And there's, I guess, just one more guy left. But oh, he's a jolly fellow. He won't stop laughing. This is the Joker. We don't want him. He's not laughing. Batman. We don't want him. He's not laughing. He's unconscious. I don't want to go anywhere near him. Oh wait, there's something in his pocket that. No, no, Joel, laugh. Joel, no. It's just, it's a laugh box. Don't do it. <laughs> oh, we need to hire someone new. So he first appeared in 1940 in Batman number one, but it was a year after Batman's first appearance in Detective Comics. But he is one of the original villains of mm-hmm. Batman. But he was only supposed to be one issue. One issue. Yeah. And they were going to kill him off. But then there was this uh, argument between um, the people that were writing the comic and the and the you know the, the company, and they ended up adding an extra panel saying, "Oh no, he might have survived." And I'm glad they did because he has become one of Truly. the greatest arch enemies of all time. Of all time. Of any of any hero. Yes. Um, and they did give him an origin in the Killing Joke, and they have in obviously Joaquin Phoenix's Joker, if that's what we are to believe. But even then, it's the unreliable narrator. Well, that's the thing. The Killing Joke has this whole story about one bad day. But he says, sometimes I remember it one way, sometimes another. If I'm going to have a past, I prefer it to be multiple choice. So that's yeah. what's so good about this you character. Get, you get to the end of this whole story of like, oh, that's the Joker's origin story. And he's yeah. like, maybe. But I mean, um, look, he's been given these moments. And I even hate to say it that way because they're very, some of the most. Uh, pinnacle moments for batman Mm -hmm. jason todd being killed yes Uh, barbara gordon being shot yes yeah like this is the joker being evil and he was i was gonna say if you don't know he's 
He's a clown. He's the clown prince of crime. Uh, he has uh, like a bunch of props and toxins. Like he's he's a human, yes. but he has like a, a flower that shoots acid, or he has this gas that makes you laugh until you die, and then your face is frozen in a smile. Mm-hmm. Uh, by the way, his image was actually uh, inspired by a 1928 film called The Man Who Laughs, and this character in there, uh, horrifying Plain, image. Yes, he looks yes. scary. Like I actually want to look at this movie so I can watch it. But uh, and they're actually funny story about the the characters origins because you talked about how it's you know you don't really know the truth of it. Mm-hmm. Apparently, even the creators can't agree on who came up with what first, and so even the creation of the Joker is a bit of a mystery. Perfect, keep it that way. Uh, obviously, I think he's a danger to Batman. He's a danger to us, and he's a danger to everyone. He back in 1996, they said he's killed over 2,000 people personally. Jeez, because he does he doesn't care. Man, that's way more than me. <laughs> um, Wait, how'd you get this job? Uh, Deathstroke? <laughs> I'm Clayface. Uh, no, but I, I, I really do think when he is one of the most terrifying villains because he is so unpredictable. Mm-hmm. You don't know what he's going to do. He may wake up from his uh, you know stupor here right now oh, let's put him and in just a cell be real funny quick. and do pranks on us and yeah. throw chattering teeth at us. Mm-hmm. Or he could wake up and just kill us all. Which is funny because there's no superhuman powers to him at all. No. But it's his intellect. It's his cunning. And I, I love how this character was even scary in the animated series when he couldn't kill. Right? He, yes. All he could do was was give everybody you know big goofy grins, which essentially killed them. Right? But yeah. but there because of censorship, they couldn't do that. And it was still a super scary, awesome character. You know, right. this he's just ugh, ugh. yeah. And I I do. Uh, like most all of his portrayals too. Mm-hmm. Like I think about, uh, I mean, people didn't really like in 1989's uh, Batman when he stole the show. He well, the, whether he was the one who kind of killed Bruce, Bruce, and, uh, or yeah, Thomas I don't, I don't really Wayne. care for that either. Yeah. but that thing is like, I'm like, I was okay with that because I was like, you know, this is another origin story. And the fact mm-hmm. that Batman did spoiler alert, for 1989 Batman, he did kill the Joker, and that was it. I don't like that either. And but that was that was an open oh, and shut case, although a contained universe. Should Batman kill? Because I feel like he should. These people really keep sh- coming in and he out of Arkham. Considering he it. does well, he does. But Batman he, doesn't kill. He just knocks people off buildings and be like, "Well, they probably survived." <laughs> really, what he does is he causes such uh, damage to their bodies that they can't afford the insurance bills, and they yeah. just fall yeah. under that. It's true. Yeah, and then they become these arch villains. Yeah, yeah. But the Medical Joker, debt, the Joker is just a terrifying character. I mean, speaking of Heath Ledger, I, I may have told the story in Cell before. I was watching The Dark Knight uh, one time, and all of a sudden, I heard a little noise on the stairs behind me, and my little son, my little. Uh, probably four-year-old five-year-old son was watching <laughs> and i was like oh hey and so we go upstairs and I, I put him back in bed and tuck him in and then i go downstairs and i start watching the movie again and then i hear him kind of sniffling and crying so i went back up and i'm like buddy are, are you okay and he's like i'm scared and i said why are you scared did you see something and then they said what'd you see on the show and he goes the joker <laughs> Oh. I was like, oh, because it is. That was your son's origin story right yeah. there. <laughs> oh, no. But it is. It is. He's a terrifying character. I don't want him anywhere near me. Yeah, we don't even want to have that conversation. Put him Maximum behind a still security. door. Maximum security. And he'll get out in a second. You but probably still. all knew that was coming. Yeah. yeah. No surprise there. That's Most why we had to save our list. tier one for sure. Yeah. Wow. Would you like the summary? Yes, please. please. Here's what we're dealing with. Uh, would you, what, what, what tier first? Would you start from the Let's bottom? Let's start minimum go up. All right. In our minimum security, we have The Riddler, Black Mask, Hugo Strange, Harley Quinn, hey. Mad Hatter, Catwoman, Ventriloquist, uh, Scarface, and then Hush. Kent's not going near. No, uh, not min- at all. Minimum security. Uh, some, some hot ladies, but some normal people. It seems fine. <laughs> not threatening. In our medium security, we have Man Bat, Deadshot, Clayface, Victor Zaz, Killer Croc, Rachel Ghoul, Raz Al Ghoul, uh, Two Face. And penguin. Yeah, I'm staying away from that. Um, you I'm know, a- some some choices were made. Yeah, <laughs> doesn't seem like a scary tier two. I'm I'm, I'm, a I'm not walking scared. down that hallway. I'm no. a little scared of this. Floor. It is our job, though. Uh, I gotta go on lunch <laughs> again. And in our top maximum security tier, we have Mister Freeze, Firefly, Solomon Grundy, Bane, Poison Ivy, Scarecrow, and Deathstroke. That and sounds- of course Joker. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That that sounds like a good place for them to be. They're all scary. I mean, I know that Firefly is is kind of the odd one out here, but it's the fire. It's the it's, fire. He has so much at his disposal to blow things up. You know, again, tier three villain, but he's a scary guy. I, we're 
really going to lose it in the medium security. <laughs> it should all be maximum security. Oh, yeah, I just got a notification. They've all broken out. Dang it. Batman! Batman! I'm still getting fired. Uh, but let us know what you think of our of our tiering. Do you agree with where we put these each one of these criminals? Where would you put them? Let us know on Facebook. Let us know on Instagram. Let us know on Twitter. We want to hear from you and hear your opinions. And are there any villains that you would like to see where we'd put them? We didn't. We couldn't name them all. There are so many Batman villains. We tried to keep it to kind of the classic rogues gallery. But let us know. We want to hear from you. All right. Before we go, we'd like to thank our patrons. So from the I Am The Listener category, we have Lady Terry A. Finley, Shannon West, Chris Drought, Sean Sanquist, Jennifer Kilkowski, Brayden Winterton, Alicia Bass, Glow, Clint Daniel, Sir and Madam Hicks, Adam and Rachel Crump, Allison Gall, Rocky and Steph, Scott Sprague, Jake the Cooler King Swallow, Andrew in the Dark, Casey Cummings, John English Brick 4 standing by, Ryan and Marley, and Debbie Foster. And from our Bacon Council, we have... Nicole sitting in the Sin Bin Hill, the one, the only Chris Anderson, Stephen Ross, Her Royal Highness Jessica Terry, our favorite couple, the Madsons, Bacon Council member Kyler, and Beaker. Patrons, thank, thank you very you. much. Thank, thank you. You, you keep thank Arkham you, City afloat. We do. And, th- and it's good hanging out with you, Bacon Council. Thanks for being with us on our, uh, on our meal. But we do, and we do appreciate you, the listener, as well. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Bacon Cell and for telling others about Bacon Cell. We really do appreciate There's it. There's so many people who share Bacon Cell, and I just love hearing that. Mm-hmm. Me too. Thank I love you. hearing stories yeah. about that. But if you want to find me, you can find me at 76Joel on Twitter. You can find me performing with QuickWits. They perform at the Midvale Performing Arts Center. For more details, go to qwcomedy.com or go to the QuickWits Facebook page. If you want to find me on Twitter or Instagram, you can find me at Kenny3DD. If you want to read my movie reviews, including the Batman review, it's at ShowtimeShowdown.com. If you would like to discuss uh, the art of prison guarding with me in person, you can do so at, uh, by <laughs> scheduling an appointment at blakesbarbershop.com. You might even get a haircut that you can pay for. Minimum security haircut. Right. It's great. And then if you want to reach out to me on social media, you can do so at Tumbling Mustard on Twitter and Instagram. But more importantly, make sure you're following Bacon Sale. Go ahead and like that Facebook page and swing by at Bacon Sale on Twitter and Instagram. While you're doing that, go to tpublic.com slash bacon sale where you can get yourself a shirt. They're really fun. They're soft. They're comfortable. And they're stylish. It's wonderful. tbubbuck.com slash bacon sale. And then if you like the show, you like what's going on, and you want to support us further, go to patreon.com slash bacon sale, where support starts at just $3 a month. Uh, you can get all sorts of uh, fun content. You get behind this bacon, you know, behind the scenes, uh, look into bacon sale, as well as, of course, our mostly weekly bacon bits where we don't talk about anything noteworthy. Some <laughs> personal <laughs> details. Indeed. Yeah, that's fine. This week. Patreon.com slash bacon sale. So until next time. Hey, Harley, do you, want, do you want another cake? Kent, no. Great stuff. Gold star. Gold Yay. stars? We have gold stars now? That's the best kind That's of the star. the best kind of stars. <laughs> uh, why is Bruce Wayne dressed up like Batman? <laughs> no, not her brother-in-law. Yeah, right? Oh, no. Oh, not, what an origin story. Not George. Yeah, George. just popcorn it. I am terrified. Yeah, and he'll mess with your hair, and you love your hair. I do. Bats love hair. <laughs> Why did he mess with my hair? He just kind of tossed it a little bit. What's going on? What's going on over this here? This is what I do. Being you funny. hate Dave Coulier? Uh, a little bit. And I only see a few red flags. Like I wouldn't mind talking to her. I what about the air buddies, Joel? What? <laughs> They're already gone. <gasps> what do you mean? Can I tussle your hair a bit? And you'd be like, sure. And I'm like, see, you're, you're not Zach. <laughs> you imposter, <laughs> Mr. Ben. <laughs> really? I have to do it. I need a root canal, therefore I need a mask on 24-7. It hurts so bad when you need a root canal. <laughs> I've been there, and it's horrible. Two Advil will not do the job. No! So you I can't quit. go near her. <laughs> I think you're going to be fired before you quit. <laughs> I just made a cake, though. Here's my card. <laughs> Guys, you won't let me have the just shift anymore. i got my address on there, Catwoman. <laughs> I've got a lot of jewels in my safe. Epidermomolytic hyperchematosis. Hey! <laughs> I, I like Mr. Dent. I voted for Did him. You call him Dent? How so come our it? accents come and go, guys? <laughs> hey, it's Tommy Dent. So is she exclusively a carnivore? Or would it be awkward if she was a vegan? Ken would see nothing but sharks with ketchup and eggs in their mouth. No! A bird he, shop? Quit bullying people. They're okay. going to become Batman villains. Like, everyone stop it. The more you know. <laughs> <laughs>